So I finally finished up my Q4 2023 uh, earnings numbers. So I want to preview those and also um, share my 2024 uh, current outlook. Now, the outlook's definitely going to need to get updated after I see the, the Q4 earnings. The remote patient monitoring revenue, uh, I want some more clarity uh, on that, not from the earnings, but from the conference call. Um, and also, we don't know what's going to happen with things like Vision Pro. So that's a line um, that's hard to model what's going to happen with the, um, the, the loss from discontinued operations. So on Friday, March 8th, Cloud uh, finally had a little bit of a bump up to between 12 and a half and 13 cents before settling back down. This kind of got me thinking about the stock and made me actually finish this video. Uh, I've been perplexed. I assume most people watching this have been curious why it's performed so poorly. Uh, I'm not sure. I don't view this as a solvency risk. Um, I'm trusting the management a bit, but they've been both their numbers, their cost cutting, what they've said of not being worried about uh, running out of money. Um, I'm trusting them with that. Um, I'm assuming this is just very boring, small cap land. Nobody big can take a sizable position. There's often only about 300,000 shares traded a day. So that's only about 30 grand a day. So nobody managing serious money can really take a position. You know, how do you take a million dollar position uh, in cloud MD? So I think we're just stuck in crazy micro cap land. Uh, until I think it'll be the second half of the year before we get good numbers. The remote patient monitoring um, won't really produce nice numbers until maybe Q3, and we're not going to get those earnings to like November of this year. Um, so like the company, uh, hopefully some press releases can drive the stock up, but uh, the earning reports themselves, um, you know, not to the later part of this year. Um, so the Q4 earnings last year were done on April 25th. So I'm assuming will be sometime around that again this year. So the earnings preview I'm doing is sort of still a, a month in advance. I just figured I'd, I'd get them out. And then again, I'm going to do my early 2024 yearly estimates and, and they'll have to be revised again. And I'll do that in, in late April uh, or early May. So I like to try to give some of the logic behind my numbers. I'm just going to run through a few of the Q3 slides that I had from the conference call and right from uh, the outlook from the company. Um, so we have that remote patient monitoring is a big part of the outlook and that three to four million of revenue per quarter. In my 2024 outlook, I'm sort of just using the $3 million number and I don't quite run to 100% of that. So I'm trying to be conservative so my numbers will be low if they do get to the, the full, uh, even $3 million or $4 million. They just can so consistently talk about their cash position, having sufficient liquidity, uh, really scaling back growth because they don't have the capital to hire people uh, for that expansion, but that would be a use of cash once they are uh, EBITDA or adjusted EBITDA cash flow positive. So anyway, I'm trusting the management. They're so consistent on their financial position in terms of liquidity. So just a few quick things from the conference call. Um, they keep talking about margin expansion. So I have a little bit more margin expansion up to the 40% that they've talked about. Uh, remote patient monitoring I already talked about. I don't have any revenue really in Q1, very, very tiny bit. And then uh, we'll talk about it later, but I'm at uh, about 40% in Q2, 50% in Q3, and 75% of what they're, of that, you know, three to four million uh, by Q4. Um, they talk about in their January 30th press release about you know how well they're doing with cross-selling with uh, current customers, and that's really their main driver. Again, as previously said, they they can't really hire more staff. They're being very conservative with or sales staff, uh, so cross-selling is is really their their main driver. And then we've they talked about expanding into Quebec and Alberta, and we have. You know, that expansion has been done and there'll be a little bit of revenue in, in Q2. Not enough that I'm, I'm modeling it, but at least it started. Um, and then again, just their their CFO in the financial side of the conference call in Q3, again, you know, talking about uh, their goal to pay down debt and that they have sufficient cash. So I'm just 
pounding home that comment of they're so consistent well, on the liquidity side. I think on the YouTube uh, comments, I got a question about solvency back a month or two ago. So I'm a bit trying to address that. Uh, so just a few uh, highlights from the January 30th uh, press release that, you know, factored into my numbers. Um, we got the cross-selling comment again, talking about 41% of sales. I, you know, this is good, but don't take it as good as you as you might want to, because again, they have to do organic growth with the salespeople they have. And they talked about not being able to expand into new geographies. They have to focus on the staff they have and the geographies they have. Where I think this company can really grow a lot stronger once they are EBITDA positive and they can you know, use their cash uh, to grow. And again, we got the confirmation of the Quebec and Ontario um, startup and uh, and revenue. Uh, and then, you know, the repo, re, remote patient monitoring has started as of January. Um, so that helps me sort of start to put some revenue into um, that division. But um, anyway, I've started, but very little revenue uh, I'm putting into my projections for, for Q1. But again, it's good that I, I can start putting it in. I was a little ambitious uh, previously and I'd update my numbers. I kind of had some revenue starting a little earlier and I had to take that totally out of Q4. Um, one thing I do find surprising positively from the January 30th announcement is talking about, you know, their continuous co cost cutting effective measures and improving gross margins. Now, they were already almost at 40 percent, which to me is the target and as high as I've I've ever modeled for this company. So I'm curious what this improvement in gross margin starting in Q1 is going to be. Uh, are we going to start seeing above 40 percent margin? I'm again leaving 40% in my model and and hoping or curious to see what this statement uh, turns into. Again, this statement is made one month into the quarter, so it's not sort of a total future projection. And then last, I'm not going to go through the press release, but we had the remote patient monitoring sort of starting um, the on the February 22nd. So again starting to model some cash from that. So in Q4, um, in HWS, I just have this sort of small growth. I think I use 3% or 4% per quarter growth in HWS. In HPS, this is where I kind of have to make guesses on the remote patient monitoring. So I'm not putting anything in Q4. I'm kind of just mean averaging uh, Q2, Q3. I'm not really putting much growth on there. Maybe I'm 0.1 of a million off. I don't think it'll make much difference. I'm a little under 24 million is my estimate uh, for Q4. Um, using the 40% gross margin, they were up to 39.8. So kind of just rounded that to 40. And they're, what we just saw uh, makes me even more confident that uh, the 40% isn't uh, it's very realistic. They keep talking about cost cutting. I'm like, how much more can they keep cutting? So I'm, I don't have from sales and marketing and research and development. I, I'm not in GNA. Uh, I'm not cutting much more. Uh, I just, I can't see how they can cut sort of big, meaningful dollar amounts. So hopefully these are slightly high. Um, the acquisition related, uh, we'll come back to that when I talk about uh, EBITDA versus adjusted EBITDA. So still about a four million operating uh, loss. Hard to model some of this blue category, so I just kind of use um, averages and a bit of estimated guesses. So loss of continue loss from continuing operations. Uh, again, have a about four million. Discontinued operations, we know Vision Pros isn't sold yet. Um, so that's going to be on the Q4 and the, the Q1 um, earning my earning estimates and their statement. Um, so hopefully Vision Pros can be sold sometime in, in Q1 or at least Q2. Um, so that sort of drags their operating um, loss down even further. And so I'm still predicting an EBITDA loss 
but uh, positive adjusted EBITDA. Now there's four or five items into the difference between EBITDA and adjusted, but I've highlighted in, in blue sort of the top two. So we got acquisition related, which I'm hoping this will start trending down, but I'm really not sure when as, you know, this company's just bought so and sold so many businesses, but that's really stabilizing. So I'm hoping by the second half, this really trends down. So that as this item acquisition related heads to, to zero theoretically, um, that will drive the adjusted and, and normal regular EBITDA uh, together. And hopefully Vision Pros is gone at some point and the discontinued operation goes to zero. I'm guessing I have it at zero in my Q3 2024 numbers. So that will really help the company being truly uh, EBITDA positive and having some cash to start expanding into markets where they don't have salespeople. So about a million of adjusted, uh, about a positive, about a million loss, not doing the adjustments is my Q4 numbers. Jumping ahead to the full year, and I kind of zoom these uh, a bit bigger. Um, again, HWS, I just keep using sort of a steady state. I think it's, again, three and a half or so-ish percent in HWS and HPS. This is the remote patient monitor guessing. So I just have 0.3 million increase in Q1, and then I have um, 50% of the 3 million per quarter run rate happening in Q2, uh, seven, uh, 50, sorry, 40%, 50% in Q3, and then up to 75% in Q4. Now the company is saying by the end of the year, this you know should be a three to 4 million improvement over the 1.4 uh, in Q3. So I'm hoping particularly Q3 and Q4 are low and it could be by uh, a million or more. Um, so you add those together, you get the revenue numbers of hopefully they'll come in a little over 30 million in a quarter at the end of next year, uh, leaving this at 40%, though they just made a statement that this, you know, in theory should be higher. So going back to gross margins, improving even more. So really curious about what will happen with this, but it's not going to have a huge effect on the bottom line. So I'm not putting, uh, I'm not even going to bother trickling this up. So potential growth, gross profit of maybe about 12 million in Q4. Again, I'm just leaving a lot of the costs pretty much the same. They're soon going to have to stop their efficiencies. And then when they become EBITDA positive, not adjusted, you'll probably see the sales and marketing start to tick up. So I'd be more expecting this to go up than down by the end of the year. I have acquisition. This is a really a lot of guesswork in the acquisition related. Um, so it was a million down to 0.7 and then down to 0.3. Again, it's hard to predict with all those businesses moving what's going to happen here. So this is my best guess now. And this would be a line I'd be definitely wanting to. I uh, will be updating. And again, these two green arrows will affect the difference between EBITDA and adjusted uh, EBITDA. So still slightly losing money on sort of a, a gap basis by the end of the year. But uh, when you take out particularly the depreciation and amortization is a you know pretty big line and that's not uh, cash related. They should be strongly cash flow positive or EBITDA positive. Um, and eventually, hopefully, I'll, we'll be able to drop off the adjusted part or I'll, I'll pay more attention to the, the straight up EBITDA. So a big part in the Q3, Q4 numbers is this um, discontinued operations going to, to zero. Um, so anyway, hopefully Vision Pros is gone. So these are my numbers and hopefully low due to remote patient monitoring revenue uh, being low. So I'm at about 1.9 million for the year. And if I had to make a, a guess, I'd maybe... Um, 111 or 12 would be my better guess. But um, again, trying to be conservative. So really curious to see what happens Q1 and if there's more announcements with remote, remote patient monitoring. So you won't get any more updates from me until we get those earnings on uh, the Q4 and full year in April. I'll uh, compare 
the actual numbers to mine, I'll probably do a quick video, use those numbers to update my Q4 estimates for the year. That might take me a few more weeks in May, and then eventually we'll get the, the Q1 analysis uh, probably in May. I didn't look up the date last year, but uh, I know the difference between the full year uh, Q4 and uh, the first quarter it isn't a, a big gap. So hopefully you found this informative. I'm always open to feedback. Uh, if any of my numbers that you think I've overlooked something. Uh, one reason I do this is by making the videos, it makes me analyze the company much more thoroughly. Um, you know, my understanding of the company has really improved since I started making the video. So that's uh, my bias. Uh, in terms of my stock position, I did pick up another 100,000 today. I have not sold any. I think it's important you know my bias or perspective. Uh, I really won't be buying any more. Um, it's a little over a 3% weighting now, which I really didn't want to go over 3%, but you kind of have to look at the risk reward. And I definitely would be a seller on a, a big increase because I'm kind of a little high as a percentage of my portfolio. So even a jump to 20 cents is a, is a massive percentage gain. So if I went from the 11 or so today to 22, that would double the weighting in my portfolio. So call it three and a half to seven, and I can't leave cloud at a 7% weighting. It's just not appropriate. So like the company, uh, and I think everybody should think of how, what amount of the shares they own, would they keep on a big increase and what would they sell? You really should have a plan and not be sort of just winging that if if things do go well. And if you're investing in the company, you're hoping it's going to go well. Uh, so you need that plan. I would probably keep about half of my shares is kind of my rough thought, somewhere between half and a third, depending on how much it goes up. Um, you know, I like the long term story. Um, so that's where the third is coming from. And as the numbers become uh, less risky, uh, cash flow positive, uh, more stable, more predictable, I might be willing to up the weighting in the portfolio. Because um, if I keep one third of the shares, that could become a pretty sizable position. So that's it for today. Hopefully you liked the video. Um, please leave comments. I do try to read them. I can be a little bit slow. And in the future, I may start making some videos just based on the comments.